My name's Sonia Anderson. My student ID is 8051813. I'm currently working at Clarence Town Vet Clinic, unit code ACMINF301A UAG. I've permission to film this practical assessment on the parvo virus. Parvo is a highly contagious virus. It causes an infectious gastrointestinal illness in puppies and young dogs, and without treatment, it can be deadly. Part of what makes this virus so dangerous is how it's easily it is spread. Parvo may affect dogs of all ages, most common in unvaccinated dogs less than one year of age. Uh, parvo uh, is spread, it's a highly contagious disease and is spread from dog to dog by direct or indirect contact with their feces. Or if healthy dogs sniffs an infected dog's stool or anus, they can contract the virus. It can also be brought into a dog's environment from shoes that have been in contact with infected feces. Canine parvovirus has been shown to live on surfaces for months. It can be, live in soil for as much as a year as it is highly resistant even to weather changes. Um, vaccines can prevent this infection. The parvovirus vaccine is given four or five way vaccine, DHPP or DHLPP standing for distemper, hepatitis, leptospira, parainfluenza and parvovirus. It should be administered between the ages of 6 and 16 weeks, given in three doses. The patient demonstrate the signs and symptoms of the disease. The major symptoms of the dogs are severe bloody diarrhoea, lethargy, severe weight loss, anorexia, fever and vomiting. At the moment, we don't have a parvo dog in the clinic, but these are our facilities. So if a dog did have parvo, it would come. We have two parvo uh, facilities. This is one of them out the back. It's ventilated. It doesn't spread any germs outside this area as it is back in the stable area. It is nice and warm. Um, so proper cleaning and disinfection of F10 are always required. We always follow the instructions which are on the bottle for pre-mixing our F10 bottles, which is all kept on the tray here. So we have our F10, and this is kept in the parvo room. We've got iodine, some more F10, we have metho to, to clean the clippers and everything here is only used in our isolation room. It is important, as you can see, I have got my PPE, which is my personal protective equipment. I'm wearing a mask. I have goggles. And gloves and an apron. I have my own stethoscope, which is only used in this area. And we also have booties and all this equipment is kept separately in our little box down here. It's always limited people that looking after the dog would come in this area. So risk of spreading the parvovirus. Discard soiled items appropriately following guidelines. So we have a separate for soiled linen in here and anything that needs to be thrown out is separately thrown into our waste basket and then discarded. We have bags, so everything is double bagged. Infected washing is done separately or may be thrown out wash hands, mop and clean. We have a separate mop and we always sweep the floor first and then mop, wearing our PPE. Wash hands, throw away so soiled PPE in specially marked bin for contaminated waste. Always follow clinic guidelines and procedures. Most dogs with parvo are treated with fluid therapy, anti-nausea medication and antibiotics. So we have a drip which is kept on the shelf here and a separate drip holder if we need to administer that. We have antibiotics and all our 
backup supplies for our parvo room is kept out on the cupboard out there. In severe cases, other medications may be required. May need to go on a drip. Most dogs will need to eat small, frequent meals of a bland diet. Continue taking anti-nausea medication until they can hold down food and antibiotics. So there's a separate bowl and food which is kept down here for the dog. Describe and demonstrate patient accommodation. In the isolation area, we have a separate cage with bedding, well ventilated, movement of air is not spread throughout the clinic. Warm, comfortable, newspaper, which we keep down here. Our puppy pads, which are here. And we have clean towels, which are our parvo, which are always um, washed separately and disinfected separately on a higher setting in our washing machine, which is separate to all our other washing. Some clinics have foot, um, foot baths, others don't. So we actually do have a foot bath. And when we leave the area, we put our feet in the foot bath and we wipe it from the towel. So it's separate. Describe and demonstrate the equipment we have the apron, the gloves, the eye protection, and the mask. We also have our thermometer, our stethoscope, any grooming supplies are kept here or on our shelf out there. We have a leash and a muzzle, and this is for the isolation room only. Bandages, needles, syringes, any other containers and towels which are kept in the isolation room are separate from clinic su supplies. All gowns, which I have on here, should be used once, then discarded. And as I said previously, laundry treated separately. Linens collected in a separate bag and washed and dried separately. Describe and demonstrate OH&S and PPE requirements. Eliminate removing all risks of infection. Isolation, this involves limiting contact with hazards. Isolating animals with contagious zoonosis parvo. A special room for isolation of animals. It must be designed with good air quality so as not to spread germs around. Hand washing facilities, which we have in our bathroom, which is separate to this area. Equipment for isolation room only. Also, cleaning equipment for isolation room only separate for the clinic. Food bowls, towels, syringes, bandages, medications. Also, a fridge. We have a fridge out in our area there. Stethoscope, as I have showed you. Thermometer and medical equipment. Only to be, to be used here. And we have a separate sink and a separate hose, which we do our washing here. As I said, all the F10 is pre-mixed. If we need to fill it up, we have supplies kept here. All waste is discarded appropriately according to regulations, policies and procedures, so as not to spread the disease or contaminate any further. Ensuring that the person responsible for administrating authorised animal treatments under supervision and recording dosages in accordance with organisation policies and procedures that the animal is regularly monitored. So we use our hospital chart, which is kept on here. And it's just our standard hospital chart that we use. That we, um, when we are administer administering and recording routine preventative health treatments in accordance with organisation standard and operating procedures. So it's important that I follow these and that if I have any questions that I ask my supervisor. That we identify and use appropriate storage of treatments in accordance with organisation policies and procedures. Records are completed relating to animal health status before and after treatment of the patient and the specific nature of treatment provided in accordance with the organisation policy and procedures. That the isolated animal is humanely looked after, that it is comfortable, warm and in a safe environment which does have an excellent ventilation, but does not allow the airflow to spread to other areas. Always check with supervisor and vet 
if unsure if the animal is not recovering and follow guidelines and procedures. Wash hands and disinfect thoroughly and discard used PPE. And I make sure that I do this before I treat the animal and after handling the animal. After, before and after it is eaten and after I clean anything up here. Discard, um, discard any PPE and laundry separately and dispose of contaminated waste. So we also have a needles, uh, just um, for our needles, here it is. <laughs> and we put our sharps in here. Wash hands again, surgical scrub, we use Chlorexess and F10 diluted to instructions. Food prep, separate bowls, separate food. We can use the Parvo diet is usually very bland and consists of rice and chicken. However, you may introduce pellets if instructed by the vet. Wash equipment separately and disinfect dry and only use in isolation room. Follow instructions, as I have said, by the vet and follow the guidelines and procedures. It may be necessary to weigh the food. So we have scales out in our other area there. And we record this on our hospital sheet. What the dog eats and what the dog drinks. It is visible to feed a dog with parvo small amounts regularly and give it anti-nausea medication and fluids with antibiotics. In severe cases, other medication may be needed. Always keep a record what the dog has eaten, the time the dog ate, whether he ate or drank, and if the dog was able to keep it down. This is recorded on our hospital sheet and also on our database, and all the medications are also recorded. It is also necessary to weigh the dog and these scales are kept down here separately from the clinic. So we can keep a track of, it, of the dog losing weight or gaining weight. Washing the bowls and equipment separately, wearing the appropriate PPE, gloves, eye protection, mask, gown and covered shoes. Discard any leftover food in contaminated waste bin, which is separate to the clinic once again. The bowls and equipment are left to dry separately. Discard all PPE used and wash dirty laundry separately to avoid any further contamination. Make sure isolation room is clean. Dirty newspaper is put into contaminated waste bin and replaced with clean newspaper and clean puppy pads, which are kept here. Disinfect with F10, which is pre-diluted and mixed according to directions on the bottle and clearly labeled and easy to use. Wash hands and disinfect. Cl Describe and demonstrate daily cleaning. Cleaning should also precede disinfection to prevent organic matter accumulating that may hinder use of a disinfectant. Cleaning involves the removal of visible organic matter using soap or detergent. Disinfection involves the use of chemical or 